The creatures of Grimm, living beings that seem to operate off of pure instinct, drawn to sources of negative emotion, and who hunt only the human race and faunus kind, only having disputes with animals when territory is in question. Although we know a few different things about their behavior and how different Grimm operate, their inner workings, their biology is largely unknown. But I think it's very likely in Volume 8 that we will be getting a good dose of Grimm biology, learning from the inside out, shall we say. In Volume 7, there was a large focus on the Pinocchio storyline, what with Penny being reintroduced into the Ruby series and the reveal of her father, Pietro, who is based on Geppetto just like Penny is based on the character of Pinocchio. And for those of you who are a bit more familiar with the Pinocchio storyline, might understand some of the implications of having a giant grim whale appear in Atlas at the end of Volume 7. As in the Pinocchio storyline, both Pinocchio and Geppetto are eaten by a giant whale named the Terrible Dogfish. So this definitely implies that at least a few of our protagonists, likely Penny included, possibly Pietro as well, will be eaten by this grim whale at one point or another definitely taking a bit more of a darker turn. Well, Volume 8 in general is going to take more of a darker turn with Salem arriving with her entire army and the Grim Whale itself, Ironwood kind of going off his rocker, and the Atlas military kind of largely being without a strong leadership at the moment. So yeah, this is definitely going to lead down a dark path. But this also gives the opportunity, if characters are swallowed by the giant whale, for us, the viewers, and the characters of the Ruby series as well to learn more about grim biology, how they operate from the inside. As we know a few different things that we have been able to pick up at various points in the Ruby series, the World of Remnant episode that focused on Grimm did give us a little bit of info as well, namely that Grimm are hard to keep in captivity, as they either die or they end up breaking out and killing their captors. Neither are really great scenarios for trying to research Grimm, and we don't really know why they die in captivity, whether this is just some genetic thing that's built in, the kill switch that either Salem put into the Grimm so that people can't learn more about the Grimm, find more of their weaknesses, etc., or whether it's something in their biology that they have to continually hunt and seek out sources of food or nutrients, even though it was stated in the World of Remnant episode that it seems that Grimm may not have to feed, instead they choose to, that might not actually be the case. We don't actually know, and it seems as though many of the characters in the World of Remnant itself don't know either because they just haven't had the opportunity to research Grimm. Hence why being swallowed whole might give an excellent opportunity for those inclined to learn something about it. If Pietro is swallowed, or other scientists who might have an interest in Grimm, or at least knowing how they work, this could be a good you know, set of eyes to see things through. Maybe we will get more of things noted about the inner workings of Grimm. But we do know some of the things, at least, about different types of Grimm. Of course, they look very different on the outside, but it also seems that some types of Grimm, though different on the outside, are also different on the inside as well. Specifically when it comes to vertebrate species of Grimm, or at least Grimm that are based on vertebrate species of animals, humans, etc., versus invertebrate species. That is, species of animals that either have a spinal column or don't. Now, the Grimm that we've seen that don't have a spinal column, that are based on invertebrate species, are the sentinels, based on centipedes, and the blind worm, which, as the name implies, is based on a worm, though scaled up to the nth degree as the thing is quite massive, able to swallow people whole. And there is something unique about sentinels and blind worms compared to other types of Grimm. Namely, these two Grimm have been shown to bleed, whereas other types of Grimm have not been shown to do that yet in the Ruby series. When fighting against the Sentinels in Volume 7 in the Schneedust Company mines, our protagonists were dealing damage to them, and the Sentinels were spewing out this green liquid. That was their blood. And in After the Fall, when Team Coffee was fighting against the Blind Worm and they were attacking it from the outside, they were dealing damage to it and it was spewing out its blood as well. However, the Blind Worm's blood was acidic and so dangerous to come in contact with, just a trait seemingly possessed by the Blind Worm at this point. I don't think the Sentinel's blood was acidic, but just the fact that they have blood 
implies that there are more similarities to the animals that they're based on or take their inspiration from and similarities to humans and faunus as well as both the blind worm the sentinels humans faunus and animals all seem to bleed but other types of grim haven't been shown to bleed yet in the ruby series when they're sliced open or destroyed they do seem red on the inside, whether that is the implication of inner organs or blood or other things like that, we don't know as of yet, but again, we might find out in Volume 7. But going back to the blind worm in After the Fall, there were a couple of other things worthy of noting about the blind worm's biology. In particular, Coco was swallowed whole by the blind worm, and we got a brief instance of seeing what the inside of a Grimm is like, or at least the inside of the blind worm. Coco described the walls that were around her as grey pulsating flesh. So, of course, Grimm have flesh, but the fact that it was pulsating implies that there might be a heartbeat or something to pump the blood through its inner organs, its inner circulatory system. We don't exactly know why it was pulsating, whether it was just because of its muscles and movement or whether it was because something was actively pumping blood throughout its body. The fact that it has blood implies that there might be other systems similar to other animals and species of animals that we know in our world. And speaking of that, there is another trait that the blind worm possesses that is very similar to worms that it is based off of. As worms in our world, if you cut them in half, depending on where it is, they can actually live and survive separately. Both halves can survive on their own. And in the case of the blind worm, when Coco was swallowed whole to get her out of it, they had to cut a piece of it off and it didn't start disintegrating. Instead, it was still alive and burrowed away into the sand. And when asked if that would survive and grow into another blind worm, Fox confirmed that that was indeed the case. So the blind worm is the first instance of a Grimm being able to be cleaved in two and continuing to survive. We've seen other Grimm take damage and scream out in pain that of course, Grimm have a nervous system on top of everything else. They can feel pain. We don't exactly know what it is that causes a Grimm to die, whether it's just a sufficient enough amount of damage or whether it's something that would realistically kill the animal that it's based on. That would also kill the Grimm. As most Grimm, we see either just cut in half by a giant scythe or a sword or weapon, what have you, or just smashed into the head by blunt force trauma or blasted by the silver eyes. There's, there's a number of different ways to kill Grimm, but normally we don't see Grimm, you know, writhing in pain. It's normally one shot, one kill type of thing, but there are instances where we do see a Grimm taking damage here and there, and it's screaming out in pain, the most notable of which is the Nukalavi, as it had its arms cut off, was writhing in pain. Ren slashed its chest, and we saw the red glow of its insides. It wasn't bleeding at this point, but it was definitely glowing red inside, which might imply something else, maybe animation constraints. They didn't want to put in the inner workings of organs, or maybe it is just glowing red on the inside, and vertebrate Grimm seemed to just have a glowing red core. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe there's just enough damage that needs to be dealt to the core of a Grimm, and that will be what ends up killing it. That type of thing. But in the case of the Nakalavi, it certainly felt pain. It certainly felt anger towards Ren. It was a very old Grimm and possibly capable of its own emotion and self-thought. Probably not the case, but still, it definitely had hostility towards Ren, and then Ren killed it by chopping off its head. So, we know that its head is definitely a vital organ, as well as the torso of most of the Grimm. Because we've seen, you know, the head of the King Taijitu absolutely blown off, that killed that half of the King Taijitu. Same with the Nakalavi. Killing the head of the Imp Grimm killed it. But Nora slammed the head of the Horse Grimm that it was riding upon. In theory, that killed the Horse Grimm, but didn't kill the Imp Grimm. When Grimm have two heads, well, one head can still die, that half of the body seems to die, and then the other half can keep going. As was the case with the King Taijitu, as was the case with the Nakalavi, there are a lot of intricate things about Grimm that we can just learn by looking deeper into these little details. Another one, when it comes to the amount of damage that it would take to actually kill a Grimm, 
Look at how Tyrion handled that Alpha Beowulf at the end of Volume 4, or mid of Volume 4. No, it was the end of Volume 4, after his tail was cut off, everything, he went back to Salem, and he was relentlessly attacking that Beowulf, taking his aggression out on it, and continuously stabbing it. One thing you might notice about that is the Grimm didn't start to disintegrate. Tyrion was stabbing it in such a way that it was staying alive. And that is also true for animals and humanity. As dark as that is, if you continually stab someone and miss their vital organs, they can be kept alive while this torture is going on. Tyrion, being a serial killer and sadist, has a lot of experience with this type of thing, so it's no surprise that he was able to do this, but this also implies, you know, superficial damage to Grimm won't kill it, but could also immobilize it, because the Grimm wasn't really fighting back, just laying there taking this, so you can see what I'm getting at with a lot of different things that could be with Grimm, that their heads and their torsos are vital to their survival, similar to other animals, similar to humans, etc. That their arms, if they are cut off like they were with the Nakalavi, they scream out in pain, as of course anyone would. It's unknown if Grimm would fall unconscious from being dealt enough pain, or if it's possible for Grimm to be unconscious at all. Hibernation state may be more like it, or frozen by the Silver Eyes, etc. But there is so much that we have yet to learn about Grimm, and I am really looking forward to Volume 8, where we might get more details about Grimm and learn more about them. There are some things that I haven't mentioned in this video when it comes to Grimm that, you know, aren't really based on any sort of creature that we've seen in our world or animal, like the Nakalavi, for example, but also, you know, the creeps and other things like that. They probably would fall into the category of vertebrate species, maybe not having blood on its own, but still a lot that we need to learn about Grimm. And we also can't forget about Dr. Merlot and everything that happened in Grimm Eclipse, because it is canon that he was able to develop a serum that he was able to inject into Grimm and make them more powerful, more ferocious versions of themselves. Not exactly sure how that has happened, or if that remains canon to this day. I think it does. But if we get learn more about Grim Biology and how they actually work on the inside, that may become non-canon. Not exactly sure, and I would like to know more about how Dr. Merlot's research went, and more about Grim in general. So hopefully this video got you guys thinking more about the little intricacies about Grim interaction about how they operate on the inside. When you see the next attack of Grimm in Volume 8, or see the characters fighting against the Grimm, notice the little intricacies that happen. If a Grimm doesn't go down in one hit, is it feeling pain? Is it bleeding? Is there other things that could be happening? Are there other things that we could notice? This is something I've been keeping in mind as I've been watching throughout the Ruby series, me being a scientist myself, having a degree in chemistry, but also a minor in biology, like, yeah, there are definitely things I think about, so let me know what your guys' thoughts are down in the comments below. I've rambled quite a bit in this video, but I would love to know your thoughts. Have you noticed things that I haven't noticed about Grim Biology? Are there other things that you would like to know in Volume 8? Do they have similar systems, like a nervous system, a circulatory system, similar to other animals and humans and things like that? Do they they actually have differences based on whether they are vertebrate species, invertebrate species, other things. Like, there's so much that could be explored in the wide field of biology, and I would love to know your thoughts down below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, that it got you thinking a bit more, and if you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want more Ruby content. Join the Guild of the Eternal Flame. Join our Discord server, link in the description below. Tweet me at PhoenixKnight7, and I'll see you guys in the next video.